We learned this year that the results of the total trial, the world's largest study of routine manual thrombectomy and ST segment elevation MI, and in brief, this approach was a total failure. But it's not that the approach may not have a home, but it's just not going to be in the STEMI setting. We are talking about a paper that's coming up in the December 8th issue of JAK, Mechanical Thrombectomy for Acute Ischemic Stroke, and this is a meta-analysis of randomized trials. So I'm with Dr. Anthony Bavery, MD, MPH of North Florida, South Georgia Veterans Health System, and an associate professor of medicine at the University of Florida, Gainesville. What's funny is manual or mechanical thrombectomy for the setting of, of ST elevation MI. That died some time ago, and that it was only manual that seemed to be working. But you, now we're going back to talk about mechanical, and at, the, at least in this particular setting, it may have a home. Why did you do this meta-analysis first off? What's the background for you? So I've been interested in thrombectomy for, for some time, and we've conducted a number of meta-analyses in acute myocardial infarction. And as you mentioned, uh, there's it's hard to show evidence of benefit, in fact, uh, no benefit with the totality of data in acute myocardial infarction, possible increased risk of acute stroke with thrombectomy. So, uh, and our guidelines have recently downgraded the use of thrombectomy in that setting. It's so, now class three, meaning no benefit. Class three for routine, it for still routine, can be considered yeah. for select cases as a class 2B, 2B, 2B yeah. recommendation. So. Uh, there are trials that have looked at the use of endovascular therapy for acute stroke, and there are enough trials that we could conduct a meta-analysis on this topic. So we looked at uh, trials that randomized patients to endovascular therapy on top of usual care versus usual care alone. Patients who were presenting with a, uh, an acute stroke within four and a half hours of symptom onset. And we found that uh, endovascular therapy was beneficial. This reduced the uh, there was a non-significant reduction in uh, all-cause mortality. That was a secondary outcome, but it also improved uh, good functional outcome, good functional uh, uh, capacity of the patients. There was a, about a 50% increased risk in the modified Rankin score of zero to two with this approach. For important safety signals, there was no increase in uh, intracranial hemorrhage, and the rate of uh, recurrent stroke was also similar between the treatment arms. How difficult is this to do? So I have to disclose, I don't do this procedure. I do it commonly in, uh, in the coronary arteries. Uh, this procedure in the neurovascular circulation is mostly done with a retrievable stent. Um, I think it's a variation on a theme of what we do, but right. uh, it looks fairly straightforward based on what we do uh, in the coronaries. So at this point, were you kind of surprised? I mean, when you went into this, you already knew that mechanical had failed in STEMI and that some of the data had, was looking positive but hadn't been reported out yet. Were you surprised, particularly after total, when you looked at your data going, hey, it's working? I was, I was not surprised. It makes intuitive sense that removing thrombus from either the coronary or the cerebral circulation is beneficial. And uh, that's been failed to, to be the case with, uh, with coronaries. I think there's still promise for it, perhaps with different technology, uh, but our current aspiration thrombectomy devices are inadequate for, uh, for removing thrombus from coronaries. So I was not surprised and it was good to see a, a benefit. And one of the points you mentioned too in the paper is while mechanical thrombectomy is beneficial, this procedure requires specialized centers of excellence. Currently about 40% of hospitals in the United States offer this uh, advanced care, so that will limit the application of this uh, therapy throughout the country and, and worldwide. What's interesting is that while we know that thrombolysis works within a particular window just like it does with heart for stroke, the majority of patients aren't getting it. That's correct. So one of the things we have to do is get more patients treated, period, with, with anticoagulant therapy. That's right. A very important comment. Less than 30 percent of eligible patients get, uh, into, get uh, thrombolytic therapy who present with an acute stroke. So just uh, increasing awareness and increasing the number of patients who get thrombolytic therapy is a very important first step. Well, I congratulate you for the study because uh, having done all of this on the, uh, the STEMI side and the total trial, it's really nice. I saw your paper coming up. It's like, oh, I got to see if Dr. Bavery is available. This is in the December 8th issue of JAG, and it is uh, Dr. Bavery's paper on mechanical thrombectomy for acute ischemic stroke, and it is a meta-analysis of randomized trials. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.